Welcome to Eclecticist. Eclecticist is an investigation of everything from a very British perspective by two brothers who consider themselves relatively normal fellows, and we do this one topic at a time. We are Jeffrey Campos, an engineer and devil's advocate, and Benjamin de Campos, designer and believer. We generally choose a topic that interests us, or has been forcefully recommended to us, spend a very small amount of time researching it, have a discussion, and then publish the notes. We see the main benefit of this as fostering a greater understanding of the world we find ourselves in currently, and before we die, we'll prompt further thought and discussion from our listeners. The topic we're tackling this time around is anti-Americanism. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, said the Statue of Liberty to the world, at least in the words of Emma Lazarus, a 19th century American poet. Let's also not forget those inalienable rights from the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. The United States of America has, since its inception, been a refuge for the world's ravaged, a land of opportunity for those oppressed in war-torn and heavily statist regimes. Today, it has a larger influence than any other nation in the categories of food, science, culture, weaponry, and democracy. So why all the hate? Why does the American in a pub feel the need to defend his own country from derision while his Belgian and Korean friends remain unaccosted? In this episode, we are not talking about neuro-linguistic programming or Lean Sigma 6. So, what is America exactly? How is America known to the rest of the world? So, what is the view of non-Americans about America? Well, I mean, to generalize, uh, I do think there is a rampant stream of anti-Americanism at loose in the culture. And it's always been this way. Uh, my entire life. I think also it's worth pointing out um, just a little bit of biographical information on, on us two. Uh, we are a kind of Anglo-American family that grew up in the UK. Um, and so unlike most people growing up in the UK, we had this um, experience of bearing the brunt of quite a lot of anti-American sentiment. Um, from the people around us. And I think it's worth mentioning that up front. What do you think? I think that's reasonable. I've certainly heard a lot of anti-Americanism. But it's a very small sample from a very large world. And I think uh, there is a lot of anti-American sentiment around the world for a lot of different reasons. I mean, America is seen as the great Satan, for mm -hmm. instance, by quite a few Middle Eastern countries. It is seen as an escape route uh, for European oppression, even today. America does seem like a, a paradise for, for many people and uh, a destination for uh, those who feel themselves to be oppressed or are wanting uh, a new life with better economic uh, opportunities. Uh, it's seen as a melting pot and is a melting pot um, to a great extent, which was part of its original um, self-declared mandate. And it's seen as a, a more meritocratic uh, nation. So, uh, you know, people really do believe that if you work hard, you can succeed. Uh, talent floats to the top. Um, it's, a, it's an ideal for a lot of people. Um, so quite a range of attitudes, I think. Uh, the great Satan, um, the reasons behind that were quite political. Um, and uh, a meritocracy is seen as something that's presented by the United States and confirmed by its denizens to the rest of the world. Uh, well, you said earlier that it's a very small sample. I mean, that it's a small sample in terms of uh, what you or I personally experience. Personal accounts. But it's not small in terms of just what was just loose in the culture, as I say. Like, what was on TV... What was just generally around um, this this tone of anti-Americanism? I mean, maybe it's maybe it's changed now. But as you know, just in the last twenty years or so, I think people are generally there's this trend for people to be generally more enlightened and to appear less small-minded. Um, I don't know, but there's it certainly was um, a rampant 
uh, this this rampant anti-Americanism in the culture uh, when we were growing up. When you say the culture, are you referring to the British culture? Yes. How does anti-American anti-Americanism manifest? I mean, what is the nature of the anti-Americanism? I mean, I I can only think of general ridicule of Americans and their perceived obesity, uh, regional stereotypes, uh, their healthcare system, the wealth gap, uh, their jingoistic national pride, um, burning flags in other countries, uh, you know, burning the American flag, and uh, economic sanctions against America. So, you know, active uh, defense of own markets and uh, prefer uh, preferential treatment for own products over American products within the borders of other countries. I don't see any other manifestations. What, what else is there? I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. So, um, you know, who are, who are these anti-Americans? Uh, wh wh where is it coming from? I mean, it, it, my, the biggest example I could think of was Iran. Iran literally have death to America as a political slogan. And they have had that since the revolution in 1979. Death to America, death to Britain, death to Israel. Um, which is quite anti-American. Well, that, that, yeah, but that's more generally anti-Western. Well, no, it's quite specifically death to America. <laughs> yeah, but didn't you just and, say death to the UK? And death to Britain and death to Israel. So it's specific to America, Britain, and Israel. That's their political slogan. Um, and there are reasons for this. Um, it's almost justifiable when you look at it in terms of history. It's not just there's no motivation for this. Why do they hate America? Rather, the Americans overthrew the democratically elected prime minister of Iran, throwing them back economically by about 100 years purely to defend British petroleum. Um, so when the Shah, who the Americans installed, was overthrown in 1979 in the revolution... You know, people didn't forget that it was the Americans who, who did this. Um, so there's the reasoning why they're anti-American. So to, to, to field anti-American sentiment from Iran is, is understandable. That's my point. So it's terrible that it's there and it's horrible to hear death to America when, certainly when you're an American. But there's reasoning behind it. They have a motivation. I can't really speak to that, um, you know, the, the sort of geopolitical uh, aspect of this with regards to the Middle East. You know, I, I don't have much knowledge of that. Um, that's not really anything I know anything about. Um, my experience more lies with uh, what's actually happening inside of the West, um, specifically just um, casual kind of small-minded bigotry and anti-americanism name calling yeah but name calling but it's 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 a specific kind of name calling um and i think the anti-american being anti-american is kind of unique in this way because particularly these days if you say anything untoward about any particular group of people or race you're quite swiftly marginalized um and you know, rightly so but um, you're not whenever you say anything untoward about Americans. Uh, and I certainly had this experience, you know, when I was a child. Um, it's like if anyone was being sort of viciously uh, nasty in my face and, meant, you know, it, it was to do with being American, you know, the teachers would often wouldn't say anything or they'd laugh or join in, you know, or something like that. And it, it just wouldn't happen were I to be from any other group. Well, I'm sure it would happen. But what wouldn't happen was th would be the teachers not doing anything about it, um, and that's happened you know right until my my adult life. Uh, for example, I am um, a contractor and I work in various different places, and in the UK I, I'd be working somewhere. People would hear my accent and they'd immediately repeat what I said back to them in an over-the-top, exaggerated American accent, and it's like, well, what the hell is this? If I spoke. If I was an Indian and I spoke with an Indian accent, would they do the same? Would they hell? So what is this open season? How is it perfectly acceptable to, uh, to be like this? 
Well, this happens in, in a lot of areas. Um, I see this happening along gender lines, where if you were to speak to a woman in the way in which a man was spoken to, it would be an absolute outrage. But because it's a man, it's fine. What like? Uh, if I try and think of a specific example, let me think. So, nothing's springing to mind at the moment, but it certainly feels like uh, there are parallels to the sort of fair gamery you are speaking about. No, there is not. About there is absolutely in, in... not. Because um, anything like that were to happen, um, a, a flag would be planted. There would be people who would be up in arms, you know, were that to be exposed in some way you know and whoever um made that transgression would have to be accountable for what they said um they'd be swiftly marginalized all of those sorts of good things it doesn't happen when um when and when being anti-american is somehow involved it's like yep fine americans can handle it um good yeah i agree yeah bunch of uh, arrogant sods yeah death to the west haha <laughs> fat so americans so what accounts for this so why, why is it fair game to, to be discordant to the Americans? Uh, I don't know. They can take it. I think, um, I think people are, some people are just nasty and some people like to insult. Um, and but why not insult the Belgians? Because if you insult the Belgians, you're branded some kind of bigot and some kind of xenophobe and small-minded in some way. Um, which you are not if you, uh, if you bash the Americans. The Americans deserve it. Perhaps they do. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> That's that then. Well, we have a list here, uh, reasons for anti-Americanism. These are all the reasons that uh, we could think of uh, that could possibly account for this um, anti-Americanism phenomenon. And they include, this is quite a long list, uh, prepare yourselves. They include uh, interventionism. So that's America's involvement in countries that are not its own. So America has more military bases in other countries than any other country. It has more economic and political interest in other countries than any other country. These are facts. There's a perceived imperialism there. Um, so that could well motivate people to feel a little less accommodating to the Americans. Uh, it's general military might. So America has an extremely large military, uh, many factors larger than anybody else on the planet, probably as large as the, the rest of the planet uh, put together. Uh, so there's the sheer scale of its uh, military worthiness, uh, which again could account for a notion of belligerence. There is its spotty support of ideals uh, with regards to other countries. That is to say, seems as though it's a little inconsistent when broadcasting what it believes to be its most moral outlook. An example of this is how it really, really heavily backs democracy in some countries, but other countries it's it doesn't even mention it, like Bahrain or Palestine. Or when it comes to human rights abuses, it may come down on one country much more heavily than it does on another. China, for instance. Uh, with whom it has far more of an economic investment uh, with. There's the support of Israel. Now, this definitely doesn't win America any friends in the Middle East by um, supporting Israel as well as it does, especially with weapons. Uh, there are lots of historical grievances, uh, mostly over perceived imperialism with America. Uh, there are lots of uh, wars that the Americans have carried out by proxy, like the Korean and uh, Vietnam Wars, uh, that hold a lot of um, umbrage uh, from other nations. There is the America First, its perceived jingoistic arrogance. So America is very, uh, and, and rightly, um, involved with its own welfare and uh, looks out for its own people and its own citizens, and it calls this sense of nationalism America first, um, which uh, I think is fine, but uh, that gets the backup of a lot of people. Uh, there are a lot of political and ideological differences in America, which set it apart from a lot of the rest of the world, not least its Declaration of Independence and uh, Bill of Rights. Um, Americans abroad. Now, other nations come across Americans perhaps more frequently than any other relatively far-flung country. Because Americans are so rich, they're able to travel 
widely, and they are found in virtually every other country. And they're proud Americans, proud to be Americans, and overtly American. And I think perhaps the locals um, have some fun with this. I, I, I du um, Dubious, I think, to that one. Dubious. Well, yeah. Americans certainly are found everywhere. I mean, they really are the most well-traveled and widely holidaying peoples of the planet. This is I, like a fact. I, I, I just don't agree with that. I mean, it's... You don't think they are? No, no. Well, I... I, I I'm sure they might be, but I think the idea that they're somehow just a problem um, in the same way that like British tourists who go to see football games are notoriously... Um... I, I'm not saying... I didn't say they're a problem. They're not a problem, but they are abroad. They are ubiquitous uh, in, in foreign, foreign countries. That, that is all. There are a lot of them. I'm not saying that they're a problem. They and could well the be mere sight behaved. of them holiday makers perhaps uh, uh, americans are uh, that's americans, not a reason uh, at all that's the, 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 that sounds ridiculous it's like oh americans are over there god i hate them look at them yeah i i'm not sure what the motivation is to hate them but uh, i think just simply being in line of sight could be a motivating factor for for someone out there my point is that there are more americans abroad than anybody else abroad in more countries more of the time. That I'd be, my point. I don't even know if that's true. What other country has more people abroad at any one time? I, I don't have the facts, but I, I, I'm questioning that, whether or not that's actually true. Well, we can, I'm, sure, I'm sure we can research that, but I, I, it's a very large country. It's a very rich country. It's a very well-traveled country. Internally, they have more planes. You know, Americans take planes like they travel on buses. A lot uh, of Americans very never used to leave air travel. The, a, a lot of Americans never leave the United States. A lot, but probably tens of millions do. Which is a lot. It's a, it's a very large country. I know it is. Um another motivator for anti-American aggression, uh jealousy. It, it it's irritating. Uh, the success of others is irritating. America is doing extremely well, and uh, that's that's not good for a lot of people. For instance, again, the Islamic countries, not to pick on the Islamic countries, but they're, they're the most overt anti-Americans on the planet, I think. Um, they're not doing so well, even though Allah and Muhammad are on their side. And instead, the Americans seem to be garnering all the success in all the different categories. That's that's very irritating. That's That's reason enough to, you know, befriend them uh, as a knee-jerk sorry what was that i was just uh, i was just distracted there because i was looking at um the population of europe is 742.5 million people in europe which yeah. is europe more... is not a country though it's not a country but what i mean is you I'm, I'm classing Yet. europeans as a different group to americans they are a different group to americans for sure okay um jealousy i brought up generally America is seen as a very successful country that have achieved a lot of greatness in a lot of areas, and that's galling to a lot of people. It may even be a natural human response, I'm not sure, but to the Middle East in particular, because of the Middle Eastern culture and how um, militaristic it is, and... To see the enemy doing so well is uh, burdensome on the befriendment uh, regions of the brain. Um, also, there's the religiosity of America, the peculiarly high incidence of religious devotion, especially for a Western nation. That's an area of ridicule, I've found. Uh, there's protectionism and uh, very high trade tariffs. So America is very capitalist and uh, very keen to trade in other markets. Uh, but when it comes to accepting competition and trade in its own markets, it raises the access bar very high indeed. So for instance, Africa, which has a lot of produce that it could sell into the American market, are effectively um, unable to, to, to get over the, the tariffs in order to actually effectively and productively sell to the Americans. Similarly, America just simply says no when uh, foreigners try to buy real estate in key areas 
whereas most other countries um just it's it's capitalism and uh, we're happy to sell you our skyline like london for instance which is i think mostly owned by the hong kongese whereas in new york you know forget about it you're not going to buy the skyline there unless you're an american uh there is the perception of false opportunity so the social mobility that america professes to enable which doesn't necessarily mesh with reality there isn't actually that much social mobility uh there is a and and this is all part of the disconnect between how america presents herself and how it really actually is in america statistically speaking uh there's the empowerment of women and the exploitation of women two two sides of the same coin that a lot of other cultures and nations have trouble with that is to say women are treated very well um probably better than any other country they're able to achieve able to they have total freedom of movement freedom of speech they have voting rights they have all of this empowerment which to a lot of countries is offensive and at the same time you could say that women are exploited in america because of all of the nudity and the cavorting around on slippery floors and music videos and the impossibly high standards that young women must try to live up to uh there's sexual liberalism um and hedonism uh, other countries have a problem with this like uh the tolerance of the homosexual com- and championing of the homosexual community and transgenders and all the other l g b p q q a i uh they relate to enter world war 2 here's another one this could this could chime in with the uh, british uh, sentiments uh late to enter world war 2 even though arguably it wasn't really their war it was a war in europe and they had to be sort of cajoled into it uh, and also there's self-deprecation. There's anti-Americanism from within its own borders. Uh, there's a lot of uh, self-deprecation in movies and the media in general. You know, there's a lot of hate coming from inside the United States, from Americans themselves against Americans. Again, it's a very large and diverse country, um, but you know, there's a lot of negative vibes in, in the, uh, the inner culture, as it were. So I think there are a lot of reasons for this uh, anti-Americanism. Uh, a lot of them you know, people have a different view. A lot of them are nonsense. A lot of them, you know, there may be some, some genuine, uh, grievances there, but, uh, I'm with you in that it does seem as though it's okay to knock America and Americanisms as if they can just take it. We just automatically assume it's fine. And indeed, if you were to say the things that you might easily say to an, to an American, to anybody else, uh, you'd be shouted out of the room. You know, if I were to just uh, go ahead and start um, uh, deprecating uh, a a Bahrainian uh, for being a Bahrainian and coming from a really terrible country, uh, I think all the non-Bahrainians in the immediate vicinity would look at me very sternly and think that I have some sort of agenda. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, just general ignorance when it comes to... um knee-jerk hating America. Like, for example, if you say something, if you have a go at a Bahrainian, he will be protected by um, someone who will undoubtedly say the reason why this, the country this Bahrainian is from is the way it is, is somehow because of America. America has just simply poisoned the rest of the world and um, he is the way he is uh, because of you, America. Um, and I've just I've encountered that in every shape and every form, um, and also people just pulling numbers out of their arse about how many people America has killed, you know, <laughs> and all all of this other type of thing. I just want to also read this little thing that I added, a little addendum to that list, um, which I think st- takes us back to the very beginning of anti-Americanism, which is um, which is this this little thought that I think it's born out of an elitist English taking exception to the young upstart America when America was fighting for a place on the world stage, possibly not long before the First World War. Um, Just a feeling. I think um, when, you know, Britain, very um, properly imperialist, like at the end of the 19th century, um, 
you know, you, you look at their human rights record and it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and, and who was this? It's America, this super young country trying to elbow its way um, into this. Tax onto dodgers. The, yeah, onto, onto the world stage. Ish. And, you know, to, to generalize myself, English being the English, we're like, ah, oh, who are these uncouth little sods um, just annoying us? And I, I think yeah. it's, it's somehow from that. I think it could be. I mean, it could easily be um, transgenerational uh, through conditioning. You know, you could you could just hate somewhere or some peoples because you're conditioned to hate them. Uh, and I think perhaps we're at the tail end of this effect in the UK when it comes to uh, to America. Uh, I think everybody's getting a little bit more sophisticated in the West about this sort of thing. And I think there's a, a far less frequent incidence of this... Uh, this sort of sentiment. I mean, I, I very rarely come across anti-Americanism. It's extremely rare. However, I what did find myself defending the Americans only last week from an Iranian uh, who certainly a, a young Iranian who had been brought up uh, for his entire life in the UK, but has you know was born in Iran and has Iranian parents and visits Iran uh, frequently, and his anti-americanism seems to be conditioned simply just knee-jerk america go to hell type thing he, he he understands that america you know he understands that the facts of what america has achieved what america has given to the world how pluralistic the society in america can be and that you know nobody's the good guy nobody's the bad guy it's always a mix of of different currents uh, but even so, he just has this deep, vested Visceral. dislike for for Americans, uh, and and you know he's he's sort of struggling with it as I tried to defend America and put him on the right track. You know, I will sympathize with him in that America really did the dirty on Iran, uh, and, and it's an absolute fact that they did. I mean, America has admitted to this. You know, the coup d'état in 1953 and uh, the the concern for oil. Uh, you know, America. Nobody is occupying America, right? America's economic interests aren't held to ransom by anybody else. It is America who has its tentacles uh, into um, the anemones of other countries and its fingers in all of their pies. That's the way around it is. So instantly, that makes you suspicious. You know, when a foreign power controls a large part of your economy for its purposes and its um, benefit, then you're going to think of that country and its people in a slightly different way. No matter what they say and no matter what they give you, you'll always think in the other side of your mind, yes, but they are in my country. And a lot of my country's resources do seem to be going to them. They make the rules, they built the game, and they control the puppets. So, and, and you know, this is, this is the, the truth in so many different ways. It, it is the truth. And there are, there are lots of different ways to look at this. You can look at it as the America first, and you think, well, that's a country that cares about its citizens, worries about the rest of the world, because it wants to maintain its own living standards. It wants to, you know, it loves life, and it wants to keep the planet going and keep market forces going and the world economy going. And it reaches out to help uh, as well as reaching out to secure its own future. It's just become incredibly powerful. And, you know, you don't want to be the enemy of America in any way. And at the same time, you don't particularly want to have anything that America really, 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 really wants a lot uh, because of its power and its ability to take what it really needs. So... A lot of this plays in the back of the mind of many in other countries, I think. And I think this flavors their general attitude towards America and Americans. And that may fuel this anti-Americanism, I believe. I'm sure it does. Uh, I mean, if there are um, legitimate grievances, then that's fine. Um, the problem I have is that there isn't uh, a lot of times. You know, pe people are sheep. And as you say, they just inherit this, uh, inherit this, um, this, this hatred. 
But I think, uh, um, I mean, I'm I'm kind of more again. I'm I'm coming with more about people who are English people from within the UK who are anti-American. Can you can you think of any specific examples of anti-Americanism coming from Brits? I mean, I heard one the other day, which I thought which was quite peculiar. It was an anti-American riff on the fleet of lawyers who cracked open the diseased carcass of FIFA. Why were the Americans getting involved? You know, why do they have to get involved in everything? And this is from someone who appreciates the exposure that the corruption has, um, has had owing to the efforts of the Americans. So it's very peculiar. Even even in that instance, it was a it was a chance to try and knock <laughs> the Americans a little bit, mm. which I thought was very peculiar. And I put that person straight. Yeah, here in the United States, uh, it's an interesting um, reception <laughs> that I've noticed with English people. Uh, it's just unthinkable the other way around. Uh, if you are if you are an English person here, then people are just really interested in what you have to say. Um, you know, they love to hear your accent. Um, they ask you questions and stuff. And even, and even not to your face, there's this perception that English people are all of these positive things. Um, not necessarily attractive, but all of these positive things. The other way around, and I'm not the first person to notice this, English think of Americans as every worse stereotype. Um, being gun obsessed, fat, religious, um, ignorant, um, and all of these kinds of things. And this is right across the board. This isn't just um, you know a group of small minded uh, English people. This is just like r right across the spectrum. You know, you hear this on the radio, for example, r Radio Four. If occasionally, you know, I've heard stuff. The American character is always this brash, loud, fat all the rest of it and stuff. So it's just, it's just disrespect. Um, I have, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna sort of um, kind of paint an analogy here, which is quite controversial. Um, in, in the past, I've drawn this analogy, which has gotten me into quite a lot of grief. Uh, I dared to suggest that I may have had a harder time in school than this person I was speaking to, this person of color, had in their good school. Um, if there was a racial slur, the offender, this is what I said earlier, the, the offender would be punished. Um, I'm not suggesting you know, that there isn't you know, an undercurrent of racism still very much in our society. Um, you know, that obviously exists, but on the surface, the, the person who is um, who dished out the racial slur uh, is dealt with and contained. In my world, a person make an unflattering remark at my expense concerning my being an American. Uh, and it's just that they, they are unrestrained. Now, I made this analogy, and it was like, oh my Christ, you've got to be kidding me if you're comparing what you, what you went through to our struggle. Um, and obviously, I'm not on a grand scheme but I am in terms of just the casualness. There's no restraint. Say what you want. Bring it on. Yes, I mean, you can sympathize with the American race um, to a great extent sometimes. Um, and, you know, it is unfair. But I, I just haven't seen any of this in living memory, in my living memory. I remember defending America in social situations in pubs, mostly. Uh, but that, that has evaporated. Uh, I, I just never come across any sort of anti-Americanism any longer. You know, I mean, I'm not an American, so, you know, I don't get any direct uh, vitriol. Uh, but I don't witness it either. Only the other day, from this Iranian, uh, that was it. Uh, from actual, well, he actually was British, but uh, from British people in general, uh, you know, only occasionally. And, and 
whenever I hear anything that even slightly resembles something denigrating, it'll be against a particular stereotype. So there are very strong perceived American stereotypes indeed. And I think it's whenever I hear any abuse directed at these stereotypes, uh, you know, I, I realize that it's uh, abuse that's directed at a stereotype and not actually any real people. <laughs> You know, it's it's a bit of a a straw man kind of a situation. Yeah, but it's the um, it's the the um this double standard thing. It's just the very fact that they're doing it. It's like, well, what what the hell? Why don't you say yeah, the is, same is it, is thing it... about this country or this country or this country? And also, yeah. your experience really is just your experience. I've had it my entire life. You just got lucky. I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean by that. Well, but, you, you, uh, you, you, you know, the French well, no, 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 the French hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. stop, stop, stop. Well, you said, um, I have not experienced any anti-Americanism. Uh, it's only the other day when I spoke to an Iranian. That's what you said. Yeah, but what I mean is that I, have, I don't experience anti-Americanism not at me. I mean, directed to Americans by, I, I don't see it happening. I'm not talking about Americans in the room who are being attacked. Uh, I'm simply just commenting on the fact that I just simply don't see any instances of anti-Americanism uh, in any sh way, shape, or form. When I do, um, it, it's towards a particular stereotype, which is a fantastical sort of stereotype who doesn't really exist. You know, it's a kind of uh, homunculus type uh, stereotype of American. Um, right. But I, I, do, I do hear a lot of anti-French sentiments. I hear a lot of anti whoever the enemy is this week sentiments uh you know it's a moving target and people express their ignorance at, at a lot of different targets um so i don't i don't see any these days i mean i think things have changed i think uh years ago i think there's a lot more um anti-america speech and uh writing and all the rest of it and I, because i think it's conditioned and i think it's generational and it could well have come from the war or before the war or you know a generation ago and i, and I just think it's uh, in this smaller more multicultural more um you know by definition diverse uh culture I think uh, people are more likely to say, yes, I visited this place and that place and this city and that county in America. And, you know, it was absolutely fantastic. You know, everybody was so kind and uh, it was wonderful and uh, everything was so cheap and the food was great. You know, I hear that. Um, good reports of experiences with Americans and America rather than any kind of bile uh, any longer. And I think, uh, you know, there's always been a lot of tacit support for America, Americans, and its uh, product. Uh, and this goes, again, right across all categories. Uh, you have culture, you know, this is an absolutely immense effect on the world's culture through film, Hang music. On, but, but before you go down this list, um, it's going back to what you just said about, you know, the world being smaller and we all get on a little bit better. I think that's true for everyone who isn't an American. Um, I think because we're that much nicer to every other race, people just double down <laughs> on their anti-American rhetoric because it's the it's now the only country, it's the only people that they can insult, and people want to insult. Um, so I, I think there's a case to be made that maybe people are just as horrible and just as racist as they've always been, but they can no longer be overt about it because you know they're they're going to pay a price. Well, I, I I despise that American that American phrase "double down," almost as much as I despise the inability for Americans to distinguish between lay and lie. That just 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 hurts my mind. But that is in no way an anti-American slur. I'll have you know. Um, but it just it just strikes me as odd when the influence of America is so great on the rest of the world that. There, there is seemingly a disproportionate amount of hate towards America. And I think it's a, a Gore Vidalian sort of they're too successful claim. They're, they're, they're irritating by their success. Cruel irony is a fickle mistress. It's true. Um, 
but they really have given the world so much, you know, all the way from Norman Borlaug and his green revolution all the way to, you know, sending a small robot probe billions of miles into space over 10 years to rendezvous with a rock uh, is, is immensely impressive. I mean, that little robot probe, I don't know if you saw the footage of when the yes, I'm okay, and I made the flyby message came back to NASA the other day. But, uh, you know, everybody in mission control were waving little American flags. Oh, is this New Horizons uh, they you're talking they about? Weren't, yes, they weren't waving Iranian flags. Uh, they were American flags. Why? Because it was America who uh, achieved this mind-bending um, goal of sending a probe to the outskirts of the uh, the solar system to orbit a couple of planetesimals. And it's just, it, it boggles the mind. You know, the, 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 the incredible contribution of America in technology and medicine and sport and democracy and culture is just, just overwhelming. And it's really irritating. You really want to hate them for it. What? Why? That is, again, I mean, I know you're kind of joking, but I think that mindset of you want to hate them because they're so good it's just something that everyone should have should grow out of by the time I think it's, I think digits. it's probably fundamental to the human condition. Well, th that, that's fine, you know, to in terms of competition and stuff. But I think um, it's again, not enough to it's not enough to achieve success. You have to see the failure of your friends as well. That's to English be, to be truly happy. I th I think that is truly a, a, a British. No, that was sentiment. Gore Vidal, and he was an American. But I think that sentiment is definitely something that I think the English seem to have more than Americans. That's a real here. slur. That's a complete anti-Anglian sentiment you have there. Here, it's a I think horrible slur against the British. Here, I, I don't believe that at all. Here, I think people are more um, open to the idea of other people's success and more encouraging. Than I found in the UK, where everyone's just so cynical and um, just nasty. That's what I think. I'm just looking for where the expression "double down" came from. I have a feeling you might be wrong, and it's not American. I really hope it's not American. <laughs> yeah, the uh, New Horizons. Not only is it the size of a baby grand piano, but it actually is a baby grand. Which makes piano. it even more an impressive achievement. I mean, I certainly have found myself. Uh, when defending America and defending myself from being an American, when I used to work in a pub a long time ago, a couple of pubs, uh, I took the Canadian defense. And that usually got me off the hook quite quickly. I simply would say, I am a Canadian, and uh, I would be left alone. Had I not lied, I think I would have fielded a lot more irrational anti-Americanism. For sure. Well, sp well, speaking of that kind of thing, um, I, I remember I... Uh, went somewhere in my flashy car and some guy uh, came out to sort of talk to me about my car and he seemed perfectly friendly and nice but I was wearing a sweater cap with NY on the front of it and he asked me about it and I said oh yes yeah, it's just my cap it stands and, for not yours <laughs> yeah and then he said oh the front of it um it it said scumbag yankee on the front of it and this is just a stranger just said this to me and he wasn't being aggressive he was just worried that I might actually be an American, um, but he didn't think I was, and so was able to you know, join me brothers in arms against uh, the great Satan. <laughs> and you know, gave me the excuse that, okay, he's wearing a hat that says New York in the front of it, but at least he's not a scumbag Yankee. I mean, I guess I, guess I can imagine people might find it particularly odd in a sort of sister nation the uk that there there would be any anti-americanism here but i but again you only have to look around and you see american businesses everywhere and the influence of america absolutely everywhere i mean it's absolutely everywhere uh and i think that's galling to a lot of british again who you know have an issue with the success of others you know i really do think it's a, it's a it's a psychological reason behind it and I don't necessarily think it's something anybody thinks deeply about when they're espousing uh, hurtful remarks. I think it is sort of a knee-jerk, uh, possibly transgenerational, possibly conditioned, and possibly on its way out.
judge them by their actions. Which again is problematic because America is quite imperialistic in lots of ways, as we've discussed. So will it ever go away? Will Americans ever feel as though they aren't being spoken about in terrible terms behind their backs when abroad? Well, unless you can think of anything else, I think we've covered everything. Uh, You have been listening to Eclecticist, the podcast uh, where we talk about absolutely anything, and we do it one topic at a time. If you'd like to leave any feedback or suggestions for shows or listen to any of our previous shows, you can visit our website, eclecticist.co.uk. Our outro music of choice this time around is, again, something open source so we don't get sued, and it is a very American piece of music called Birch Run. It's a traditional Native American drumming with rattles. It's by Kevin Kevin McLeod, and it's uh, licensed under the Creative Commons, and you can grab it um, at the uh, incompetech.com free music website. Thank you very much, and good evening.